Okay, in this video, we're going to be checking out the masking feature. And I'm going to be using the EQ module standalone, but if you don't have Neutron 2 Advanced, you can just use the Neutron 2 Mothership and only activate the EQ inside of there. The techniques work the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it on both of these channels. I've just got a grand piano on one channel. And remember, it's always a good idea to start naming these things. So I'm just going to type EQ Piano. I like to leave EQ, especially if I'm going to be just be using the EQ module. If it's the mothership, I might, you know, type in MS or something. It's just a good way to start keeping track of everything. Obviously, with the two tracks, it's not a big deal. But once you get into your 50 track uh, projects, you know, you really want to start labeling stuff. And I'm just going to drop it over here. This is some strings. So I'll EQ strings. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and listen to these two together. Okay, so they take up a lot of the same sonic space. And what the masking meter does is helps you identify where it's taking up the most space and where the frequencies of both might be causing problems. So just in general, quote unquote masking isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's a good idea to keep track of where it's happening, especially with like a piano and a strings that are playing the same notes. You might be getting too much of it and it's getting cloudy and it's difficult to distinguish between the two instruments. So I'm gonna turn on the masking feature and there'll be a drop box that comes up right next to it. If we click down, we can choose any other instance of Neutron 2 EQ, whether that's in the mothership or just another EQ anywhere else. It's, they will all be listed here, and that's why we need to start naming things like I said earlier. So if I click it, now I have two EQs here loaded up. This is the EQ on the piano, and this is the EQ on the strings. And the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and play this audio one more time and check out what happens inside of the spectrogram right here. You see all those white lines? That's masking. And the brighter the white, the more masking that's happening. And again, it's not necessarily a good thing, but we can actually get rid of it by using the EQs now. So I can maybe boost right here where that masking was happening. So you see that boosting right there actually reduced the number of white lines and actually made the lower end of the piano stick out more in the mix. Now there is this inverse link option right here, which is something I would suggest using. Watch what happens. As I boost this node, the node on the EQ of the strings actually goes in the opposite direction. So if I dip it down, it actually gets boosted up here or down here. Uh, we have all of the controls that we have on the EQ inside of this secondary EQ here. So I can adjust the Q if I want it to be more equal to this one. And there we go, something like this. So this way I, ha I can actually reduce masking with by boosting less. So you can see doing that now, having it be a kind of an inverted EQ has really reduced the masking that was happening there before. If I turn them both off, so there was there, if I turn them back on, pretty much all gone away. And you need to make the decision of whether or not that masking in that particular frequency range was distracting or taking away from the actual audio. In this case, it kind of was, I think. And I chose the piano and the strings playing the same notes to kind of demonstrate things. But that's what the masking feature is doing and why it's so important and so powerful. Now, there is 
another thing called collisions that the masking meter will show you. And that happens up here above the frequency. And I don't have any right now, but essentially what a collision is by the definition that Isotope has given it is too much masking, like a serious problem. And I could actually demonstrate that to you by turning up the sensitivity of the masking feature. So let's go ahead and crank it all the way up and play these two together and see what happens. So you see these pink grids up here, these pink columns, that's where masking collisions are happening. And that's saying, hey, these are areas you need to you need to take care of if you want it to sound better. Now, obviously this is super sensitive and that's kind of ridiculous, but if we just turn it up a little bit. So you can see that there's quite a bunch going on right here. And these columns are band by band. And I forgot how many bands there are across the spectrum, but there's quite a few. So if you see a big chunky one, that means more than a few bands in that area have been masked and there are collisions and you might want to EQ them. What I'm going to do is keep that inverse link locked, let the music play and see if I can't get rid of some of those collisions by adjusting these EQs. <laughs> We've knocked out quite a bunch of masking using this feature. Let's go ahead and bypass it and see if we can't hear the sonic differences between the EQ'd ones and the un-EQ'd ones. But before I do that, I actually want to come in here and maybe just adjust the Q values for these two filters on the uh, strings EQ. Let's go ahead and check it out now. So obviously the piano is too in your face now, but what I was trying to do there is to show you an exaggerated example of how you would use this. Maybe you want the strings to stick out more than the, uh, the piano in this instance, or maybe you want the string higher end to stick out more than the piano higher end, but have the piano's lower end stick out more. So we could just simply kind of flip this upside down. And another thing to remember, when you have the inverse link, you're essentially doubling any effect. So if I didn't have this uh, inverse link enabled and I move this, it's only moving a little bit, but when I inverse link it, it's actually doubling the effect. So if I go plus two dB here, it's actually gonna negative two dB here. So really getting a four dB separation between those points inside of the EQ curves something to think about. Uh, one other thing I wanna bring to your attention is you still have access to the learn function. Again, this is if you're playing the track, hit the learn button and Neutron 2 will decide where the best positions are for these EQ nodes. And also you have the ability to show the parameters if you prefer using the sliders down here or inputting any numbers by double clicking. You also can choose the band shape here and you can even use dynamic EQ, which is a whole nother level of just versatility here. That way, maybe I'm only getting the dip from the EQ uh, of the strings when the piano has a significant amount of frequency in that spot. This is covered in the dynamic EQ module of this video series, so I'm not gonna cover it here, but just know that combined with the masking feature and that dynamic EQ mode, and you're gonna get some really nice precision-based EQing and really clear up any masking issues that you might find that are shown inside of the masking module inside of the EQ.
inside a neutron too. So quite a lot going on right here, but very, very useful when you start getting in and mixing your tracks. Let's move on to the next video.